You've also mentioned to me offline that you're really excited about all the different wearables and all the different ways we can collect information about our bodies, about uh, well, the whole thing. Is it, what, What's most exciting to you in terms of collecting the, the, the biological uh, data uh, about a human being? Well, so I'm a biologist. I find animals and humans as machines very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the reasons I didn't become a, an engineer or a surgeon. I wanted to understand how we actually are built. <clears throat> and uh, so I think a lot about machines merging with humans. And the first of that are the bio wearables. And so I talked a lot about this. I wrote about it um, in Lifespan, the book, and pictured a future where you would be monitored constantly so that you wouldn't suddenly have a heart attack. You'd know that was coming or you, you wouldn't go to the doctor and they don't know if it's an, you need an antibiotic or not. Um, long term, how old are you? How to fix things? What should you eat? What should you take? What should your doctor do? These devices, I predicted, would be smarter, better educated than your, than your physician and would augment them. And then there'd be a human that would just tick off to see if that it's correct and they approve. Um, I also was predicting in the book that we would have video conferences with our doctors mm -hmm. and that medicines would be delivered initially by courier, but eventually by drones and get it to you sometimes in an emergency. And that we, we could even have pills that were, were synthesized or delivered um, in your kitchen and combined certainly. What's amazing about that is that, what are we now, two years since the book came out, even less, and that future is basically here already. COVID-19 uh, accelerated. accelerated that incredibly. So where we're at now in society is if you if you want to pay for it, you can have a blood test that will detect cancer 10, 20 years earlier than it would before it forms a tumor. You can, uh, of course, do your genome very cheaply for less than $100 now. Um, there are bio wearables already. I wear this ring from Aura mm -hmm. um, that I have a number of years of data. I've been doing blood tests for the last 12 years with a company called Inside Tracker, which I consult for. And so I have all of that data as well. And there's 34 different parameters on my testosterone, my blood glucose, my inflammation. And I, I use all that data to, of course, I, I wear a watch that, that measures things as well. I use that data to keep my body in optimal shape. So I'm now 51. And according to those parameters, I'm at least as good as someone in their early 40s. And I, if I really work at it, I can get my biochemistry down to early to mid 30s. Um, though I like to you know, now eat a little dessert once in a while. So that's the future we're in right now. Anyone can do what I just said. But in the very near future, just in the next few years, uh, you can be wearing wearables. So I, I'm currently wearing a, a little, what's called a bio sticker. Uh, this one um, I just put on last night. Uh, it's about an inch long, a few millimeters. Uh, yeah, for thick. people just listening, it's, uh, it's on David's chest. Yeah. It's just, a, how does it attach? It's just kind of... It sticks on. It sticks on. Yeah, so on one side, you have an on button that you press. The lights come on, flashes four times. Cool. It's good to go. It immediately syncs to your phone. And this one, uh, the it's called a bio button. Nice name. And there's a, there's another one that I have that I haven't tried yet that does EKG on your heart. Um, this is mainly for doctors to monitor patients that go home after a heart attack or surgery. But that's medical grade FDA approved device. Wow. So there will be a day, in fact, it's already here, that uh, doctors are using these to get patients to go home and save a, a week in hospital, $2,000 at, at least for each patient. That's massive save, um, savings for the hospital. But ultimately, what I'm excited about is a future that isn't that far off where everybody, certainly in developed countries, eventually these will cost a few cents and rechargeable. The only cost will be the software subscription that can be monitored constantly and to give you an idea what this is measuring me at a thousand times a second is uh, my vibrations as I speak, my orientation. It can tell, already has told me this morning how I slept, where I slept, what side I slept on. Uh, we've got sneezing, coughing, body temperature, heart rate, heart of other parameters of the heart that would indicate heart health. These these data are being used to now to, to predict sickness. So eventually we'll have just in the next year or so, the ability to predict whether something or diagnose whether something is pneumonia or just a rhinovirus that can be treated or not. 
right? This is really going to not just revolutionize medicine, but I think extend lives dramatically. Because if I have, if I'm going to have a heart attack next week, and that's possible, this device should know that, and I'll be in hospital before I even have it. Maybe you can talk a little bit about Inside Tracker because I saw that there's some really cool things in there. Uh, <laughs> like it actually, so um, maybe you can talk about. I guess that you're collecting blood uh, to give it the data. So, and it has like basic recommendations on how to improve your life. So it's not, we're not just talking about diseases, right? Like anticipating uh, having a particular disease, but it's almost like guiding your trajectory through life, how to, whether it's extend your your life or just live a more fulfilling, like improve the quality of life, I suppose this is the right way to say it. What, how does Inside Tracker work? Uh, what the heck is it? Because I thought there was also pretty cool. Yeah. What is it? I guess it's something other people can use. <laughs> you, you can definitely use it. Uh, you can sign up. It, it's consumer. It's like a company, consumer facing company. It is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and I also want to democratize the ability to to just take a mouth swab. Eventually, we don't need to have a blood test necessarily. But for now, it's a blood test, and and you'd go to a, a lab core request in the U.S. Um, it's also available overseas. You can upload your own data for a minimal cost and get the algorithms, the AI in the background to take that data, plot where you are against others in your age group as in terms of health and long longevity at bio age, they call it, no, inner age. But also it provides recommendations. And this isn't just a bunch of BS. It sounds like it might be to say, I'll oh, go eat this or go to that restaurant and order that. But it's actually based on, they basic, this company has entered hundreds, now it would be thousands of scientific papers into their database and hundreds of thousands of human data points. And they have tens of thousands of individuals that have been tracked over time. And anonymously, that data is used to say what works and what doesn't. If you eat that, what works? If you take that supplement, what works? And I was an, a co-author on a paper that showed that the recommendations for food and supplements um, was better than the leading drug for type two diabetes. <laughs> That's so cool. The idea that you can connect like skipping the human having to do this work. You can connect the scientific papers, almost like meta-analysis of the science connected to the individual data. And then based on that, sort of connect your data to whatever the proper group is within the whatever the scientific paper is to make the suggestion of how, how like how that work applies to your life. And then that ultimately maps to like a recommendation of what you should do with your life. Like it all, like this giant system that ultimately recommends you should drink more coffee or less. <laughs> right, and and we'll have the genome in there as well. You can upload that. Yeah. Uh, and so awesome. so these programs will know us way better than we do and and our doctors as well. Yeah. The idea of going to a doctor once a year for an annual, annual checkup and having, you know, males get a finger up their butt and, uh, yeah. you know, you cough. That, that to me is a joke. That's medieval uh, medicine. And that's very soon going to be seen as medieval. Yeah, it's um to me as a computer science person, it's always upsetting to go to the doctor and just look at him and like realize you know nothing about me. <laughs> like you you you're 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 making your like opinions based on like it is very valuable, years of it, intuition building about basic symptoms, but you're just like it is medieval. They're very good at it. In fact, doctors in medieval times were probably damn good at working with very little. But the thing is, I, I'd rather prefer for a doctor that doesn't really know what they're doing, but has a huge amount of data to work with. <laughs> well, you're right. And many of my good friends are doctors. I work at Harvard. Um, so I'm, I'm not against the profession at all, yeah. but I think that they need just as much help as anyone else does. We wouldn't drive a car without a dashboard. We wouldn't think of it. So why would doctors do the same? <laughs>